Paul here and get started with our uh, uh, agenda here. Uh, can we uh, first get a motion to approve the minutes of our prior committee meeting by <coughs> Supervisor Strauss, seconded by Supervisor uh, McGowan. Those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, why don't we just rock and roll and get right into it? Uh, it uh, I think it Wayne, are you gonna? Or, or, or Ed, are you, you going first? Go, go ahead, Ed. No, go ahead. Why don't you jump into it, Ed? Yeah. Yep. We bring out the egg timer. <laughs> <laughs> still on Good morning. Good morning. Uh, we will uh, <coughs> not only be passing out at our conclusion here of a presentation uh, of an overview that we uh, have. One of the new things that I wanted to uh, bring up this past month, we have been working with Orta. Uh, and specifically Gore Mountain. Uh, today is the final day for comments to Gore uh, on their uh, proposal. Each five to seven years, they're required to undertake an update uh, <coughs> on proposed plans over the next uh, five, seven years. Uh, this involves undertaking a basically a generic impact statement uh, proposal as to the number of improvements that they're anticipating doing subject to funding, of course, um, by the uh, state of uh, New York. And so today is the last day. EDC has gone out and supported and will be putting into uh, the uh, portal uh, today uh, by 5 o'clock our support uh, for Gore Mountain's uh, management uh, plan. Um, the plan is a very intensive plan of over about 500 uh, pages prepared by the LA group in uh, Saratoga. So ORTA works with DEC and the Adirondack Park Agency in uh, submitting this report. So this is kind of phase, the end of phase one of uh, the impact statement and some of their proposals. So essentially they're looking to do the expansion of their trails, uh, mountain biking, as well as another other infrastructure items such as increasing their water lines so that they can uh, obtain a better snow making capacity in certain areas as well as making some activity to the uh, people uh, or uh, small floors um, I like the sea ball is a better name uh, in that particular area. Those are uh, very detailed but you really can't make out what that is, but that's a proposal of some of the improvements that Gore uh, is proposing. Significant economic impact of having Gore Mountain uh, in North Creek, Johnsburg, in the yeah. yeah. country, and in the entire uh, county. And are those uh, the new darker uh, spots, yes. the added trails, oh yes. my gosh, yes. that's yes. quite an expansion. Some of that by expansion means, you know, widening a, a little bit of moving from trees and so forth from the safety point of view as well as connected to the uh, in those particular uh, areas. Uh, again, just want to mention that in 2017 we uh, were successful in a uh, number of uh, projects within the Six million dollars in projects. Now the, uh, the fun part, each of these projects has to receive a particular uh, contract from the respective state agency that over sites. So whether it is Empire State Development, which has the majority of those, the Department of State or Housing Community Rule, um, which uh, Supervisor Strahl is working on with uh, the affordable housing uh, as an example. Um, and we were successful in putting together a blending of uh, public uh, facilities uh, and improvements such as around the Lake George with a number of uh, environmental uh, issues there in the private sector by uh, assisting with funding uh, for uh, West uh, Mountain the first time uh, for Stortex uh, in uh, Queensbury and uh, some others also with uh, O.P. Fredericks uh, in uh, Chestertown for the development of the Montreal uh, Brewery uh, location uh, in the area. So a couple of diplomatics on Pines Island received a $600,000 grant to team with jobs and a major expansion, uh, as well as some Pine Island uh, development uh, in the particular uh, areas as well through the items here. Um, in addressing, I'm going to kind of skip through there because I believe uh, <coughs> Supervisor Wild had uh, requested some information. Uh, those are a couple of loans that are the final uh, process uh, of undertaking here. Development in 
wanted to get to the very end weighing of my presentation here this morning to look at, Mike had asked about our website and communication and contact and so forth. So we updated our website in 2014 and we are looking to undertake this fall an update on our particular website. And in addition to our website, we really, wow, there we go. I know. Well, we have passed this out, but in this, let me just spend a moment here, what we call a communication platform, which not only includes the website, but also other items such as we do. We have an insider publication that comes out on our website every two weeks. We're going to get a copy of this. We also have news alerts that come out on Washington Watch, along with our LinkedIn, our Facebook, and Twitter as well in our particular communication aspects. And through new users, we've identified 32,348 new users, sessions of about 41,000, 93,000 pace views, and we developed that off our Google Analytics. So what we're going to be doing is the site is principally two focuses. One, general public information compliance with certain information under ABO, as well as working with site selection and promoting various vacant sites and developed sites that are for sale within Warren County as well. And as I had mentioned previously, one of the first items that a site locator will look at when the company they've been hired by to look at, to expand, or to come into our region is to identify the region by going to the particular site. And I know the last couple of years, Chester has developed a very vibrant site showing off their, showcasing their characteristics. And it's important that we refresh this every so often. So we'll be updating this and probably making some changes as we go forward in our website development. Importantly, other sites on the platform are becoming equally important for transmittal of information, and that's Lincoln is another particular item that we have. We utilize constant communication. We have about 2,600, 2,700 addresses that we regularly push this information out to, and we're always looking to expand that out as well. So I wanted to make sure before I started today to address any questions that anybody else has on the issue. Yeah, Ed, I was just, I was just looking through my notes. I was, excuse me, Mr. Chairman. Go ahead. But I was, I was really trying to understand differentiation, right, in terms of how we can track how we're doing and how we differentiate ourselves versus what we see as competitors in this marketplace for relocation of businesses. Yeah. You know, and I think each place is, everybody likes to say that we're unique. There's some common characteristics that we highlight and promote and discuss. I think that it's a combination of the quality of life in terms of that becomes attractive to new companies that are looking for an expansion of why they want to expand here. Part of it is the quality of life that the employees enjoy the region as an area to live and work. Also, what we have to do as part of this attraction is the development of continuation of workforce development in our area. That's important. SUNY is taking some great strides by their expansion of the area. That's why EDC works to have, on a very small scale, the EPA job training. That is retraining of individuals. We are working with the Center for Economic Growth that will be working with us this year in identifying a couple of major areas of where there needs to be some increase in job training and some education updates on computers. Some of your smaller businesses realize the importance of having greater access and presence on the website, whether it's in the marketing area or the fulfillment centers. So we're trying to identify those particular areas. You can't necessarily have a job training course 
or four or five jobs at a time. So you have some major areas. Uh, a couple of years ago, uh, Warren County One Stop with uh, Chris Hunsinger um, undertook uh, welding. Welding was identified as an area that was under uh, underserved by uh, manpower, uh, limit power in this uh, area, and, and it remains that particular area. So that's one area that we're going to be looking at to see what we can do uh, to be uh, assisted. Another area that uh, we have identified in the past is that like the aging of the nursing uh, population in the area, which is a which is a statewide national problem, we also have in this particular area the, the paper industry and the logging industry, uh, where there is an aging factor uh, of, of our loggers and our truck drivers uh, that are bringing the product uh, from the North Country down into uh, Finch Paper or north up into Tug County Rogan at International Paper. Uh, we've been working with ESD and they're looking at some potential programs for retraining as well as areas of cost such as workers' compensation becomes a very expensive cost for these small businesses in the area. Also some uh, possible financing. These uh, logging trucks are not your grandfather's logging trucks. Uh, they're, they're expensive. They're over $200,000 each and you've got to cut a lot of timber uh, and convert that and get your pay in order to pay off those uh, trucks. So those are a couple of areas uh, that are more urban with one and more rural with another that we are closely uh, <coughs> Great. Thank you very much, Ed. I uh, deeply appreciate that. Uh, well, why don't we, uh, maybe if we can, maybe uh, jump into... Uh, are you, I'm, are, is that oh, that's it. Is it? Thank, uh, thank you, Ed. I appreciate that. Sure. Yeah. Uh, we get, uh, Wayne and Chris. Uh, well, oh, okay. Two, if I can. Two of you. Two of better. That's right. <coughs> you should walk them down. All set? Get all set. Uh, resolution to amend uh, resolution number 773 of 2014. Uh, again, why don't, we, uh, why don't you discuss it first before we get a motion, okay? So you want to get it on the floor and then discuss? Uh, now, why don't we discuss it and then we'll put it on the floor. All right. The. Uh, the this request is uh, at the uh, at the request of the grant agency. Um, as it says, all the uh, parties that are sub that are uh, recipients of funding within the grant uh, need to be identified in the memorandum of understanding. So we're asking that that be amended at the request of the county attorney's office to include those agencies so that we can move this forward. Great, thank you. Can I get a motion to approve that? Uh, Craig, a second by Supervisor Simpson. All those in favor? All right. Uh, any. Second one is a uh, uh, resolution to uh, create the position of junior planner in our budget for this year. We had it was just identified as planner. Chris has been working with the personnel office to define the roles and responsibilities, and it's they suggested of what a grade 12. Suggested a grade 12. Um, and suggested amending the title from planner to junior. Right. Without so. So we would request that the uh, department's table of organization be amended accordingly. Great. Thank you very much. Can I get a motion to get that uh, Supervisor Strauss, seconded by Supervisor McGowan. Uh, any dis further discussion? That means you're going to be around here a lot longer. Uh, I haven't well. seen That's good. <laughs> good move. <laughs> so, you, you think that junior is an appropriate term? Or I think so. Yeah. you give to an adult? I, I think so. Yes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Well, yeah, it's uh, it's more of a position than, than an age, but although they are, you know, this is a rookie out of college that we're probably looking at, so, you know, they are still wet behind the ears. I was a senior planner, so. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. And then number three. Okay, three, again, is to amend our table of organization. Uh, Martin Fitzgerald is retiring at the end of this, well, end of this week. Um, <laughs> And we still would like to retain the services on a part-time basis, so we'd like to move the uh, construction cost coordinator from a full-time to a part-time uh, to maintain the same hourly rate. Um, we have funding in our budget now on, on the part-time salaries, um, and talking with the treasurer's office, we have to wait and see how the Marty's payout at the end uh, affects our budget, and, and uh, Rob suggested we make uh, adjustments. You know, if we bring this person on at some point later in the year, then we work, look at moving uh, money around. Hopefully we won't need any additional money, um, but uh, 
we'll go we'll tackle that when we get there. Kramer. Are you looking at um, backfilling his position and hiring him separately? Is that something you've looked at? Yes, we want to bring him back um, after after the table of organization is, is uh, amended, yes, at the board meeting. No, my question is... Oh, the full-time position? Leaving his position full-time no. and hiring him on just to see if there's anybody out there because I know that's something... No, I, what we're looking at is um, kind of reassigning things and the junior planner would take out, take up some of the things that, that he's been doing. Okay. Maybe out of title okay, a little so bit, but, be, you know, been doing it. And the junior planner section, is it full-time? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Any further discussion? Can Make a motion. Make a motion. Thank you, Mr. President. Simpson, to second that by Brad McGowan. Thank you. Any further discussion? Go ahead. Just something that was, was brought up and that's about when people do retire in your budget you do not already have some sort of set aside for that that day that may come no um i was under the impression there was discussion at the county a couple years ago that there was going to be a fund set up to handle that yes um and i thought that had happened and when i inquired uh, a couple weeks ago that that uh, fund had not been set up so We'll have to uh, adjust our budget accordingly uh, later in the year once we see how it all falls out and what his the buyout of his, his sick time and, and everything is. So I just asked that because last year we had amend budget some to accommodate yeah, for it. Yeah. Right. But we can always expect it. I wonder we can always expect somebody to retire. Maybe we should. Sometimes get you can. Yeah. Okay. Appreciate that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. All right. That's all I have. Uh, thank, thank, thank you, you for uh, adding me to the agenda. I did not <laughs> request a meeting, but these things came up. So, well, um, I, I thank you for coming back from San Antonio early. Uh, you have another four or five days of vacation and yes. enjoy the rest of your week. Uh, I don't think the weather's going to be quite as comfortable as San Antonio, but uh, we, we can only hope. Huh? Eighty-one was too hot. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, guys. Appreciate Wait till it. Wait you're back a couple of days. Eighty-one will feel nice. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, the the next item uh, will be uh, maybe maybe a discussion and uh, uh, as it relates to uh, Lake Champlain, Lake George Regional Planning Board. Uh, Walter Young uh, and Beth Gillis are here this morning, and I would you you guys like maybe like to sit at the table? It may, maybe a, a tad more conversational, and uh, uh, maybe come on up here. Oh, thank you, thank you so much. Yeah. I was uh, asked at the last uh, finance committee meeting to attend this meeting and speak just a little bit about our revolving loan fund program, which dates back to uh, 1987. Uh, I have a hand, some handouts here for these books. Sorry, it's uh, list of uh, summary. I will. Uh, active loans we have uh, here through December of this year. Uh, and the, the program was set up by the U.S. Commerce Department back in 1987 to provide uh, high-risk uh, financing for local business expansions and startups. And when I say high-risk, I mean that they must a loan applicant must be denied a conventional bank financing before they can even approach us for either working capital or fixed asset loans. Uh, going back since its inception, we've um, funded approximately 240 projects, uh, $13 million in direct uh, loan financing, and then we consider the other federal, public, and private financing that went into these projects. We're looking at a total of roughly $43 million that's been invested uh, since 1987. Uh, currently, we have uh, about $3 million in outstanding uh, loans, loan receivables. Uh, the program has been very good to us. It's uh, pretty, pretty much self-sustaining. It started off at an investment of about $1.5 million, lent out uh, a little over $13 million, so it's revolved, you know, almost 12, 11 or 12 times to the state of the game. And uh, I just want to mention, too, that Warren County does not provide any uh, direct funding to these programs. 
that is in heaven. Great, thank right. you. Uh, Go ahead. Yeah. Questions? Yeah. Uh, I, I don't. Uh, does any members of the, the board uh, for the committee would like to make a question to Claudia? I have a question. Are, your, are the loans decided by the planning board themselves? It's the a loan board, committee. There's a loan, loan committee through loan the... Permanent loan committee of the regional board. Of the, okay. Because yes. there was some word about a separate organization that was actually distributing the funds, and I wasn't sure if the decision-making body was part of the planning board or that other it's part of the board. body. Okay. It's and does the loan committee come then to the board and give their recommendations, or the loan committee is the one making the decision? The loan committee makes the decisions. Okay. We meet, you know, on an on-call basis. We probably do wait anywhere between 10 and 15 loans. Okay. Average loan size is around $75,000. We can do a maximum up to 150000 in many instances, say where a loan applicant would require uh, more than $150,000, we would work with organizations such as ADS, local loan corporations, EDCs, even uh, local banks to put together a package. Are these amounts that you have listed here, are they outstanding or the loan that they actually receive? The loan they receive. Okay, so it's less hopefully that's still outstanding what for you. Right. Supervisor Beatty. Um, yeah, I've got a, a number of questions. So what I'm seeing here now is the outstanding loan portfolio. So this is every loan right now in the last three years, Walter? Or? Yes. So this is every loan in the last three years. Those, the figures you see there are not outstanding balances. So there will be initial loan amounts given out. Okay. Okay, so this is all the loans in the last three years. Um, now, the Lake George Lake Champlain Developmental Development uh, uh, Planning Board. Tell me the connection with you guys and that. Two, two totally separate bodies. The Development Corporation was formed back in the mid 80s to accept a grant from the U.S. Department of Agriculture to start the revolving loan. But that program is separate and apart from the original plan. And, and who does that work? That's a 501c3 program. Okay. Do they? Who do they report to? U.S. Department of Agriculture. So they. So they. All the reports are filed through. US yeah, but do, do they? Do they? The U.S. Department of Agriculture has oversight over them. Yes. Okay. And there's no connection between your board, your commission, and the developmental uh, development. Uh, uh, They're two separate. Yeah, two separate. separate. So you guys have the, now because I notice you're on both boards. Yes. Okay. So I'm just wondering, maybe you guys oversaw that board or. So I'm trying to kind of figure out the, uh, the so they get a separate grant from the U.S. Department of Agriculture, and they then hand out those loans separately. Yes. And then your board gets grants from the U.S. government, and you guys hand out loans, okay? And you have a loan committee. Now, who's on the loan committee that determines who gets the loans? Uh, right now, we have five, five or six individuals. Could you tell me who they are? Peter Marshall, with, uh, Marshall Associates, Harris and Sangster with Lentz Falls National Bank, uh, John LaPointe from the town of Putnam, Tor Tory Riley, who used to work with the Adirondack Regional Chamber of Commerce. Oh, Luke Tessier. Nope. Pat Hunt. Okay, thanks. And uh, so this board, this loan commission of board members meets how often in a year? Like last year, 2017, how, how often would they have met? Um, we probably had 10 loans last year, so 10 times. 10 times, okay. And then they make a recommendation to the full Lake George Lake <coughs> Champlain Regional Planning Board. Is that how this works? They, 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 they make a recommendation to you guys? or No, they have the authority to approve or disapprove a loan themselves. Okay, so those seven people or whatever have the authority to, to determine the loans. Yes. Okay. Um, uh, and, the, and, and do you have the criteria on who qualifies for a loan? Now, you mentioned 
they have to be turned down by a bank. Okay, they have to be a high risk uh, uh, company. All right. Um, are there any other parameters or guidelines? Yeah, they're yeah. contained in our revolving loan fund management plan. Okay, and where could I get that that plan? I can get a copy. Okay, could you send that to all the board members, please? Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, and now, I, I saw that thirty about thirty five percent of the loans are have some type of default or are in interest default mode. Is that correct? Not that I'm aware of, no. Well, according to the Marvin Report, which is a company that audits you guys, they said that, and I sent that to you and to this whole committee, that, in fact, the whole board, that, that, that they reported that there was 35% of the loans were in uh, the interest default mode or position. Not that I'm aware of. We have 2.5 or 2.9 million in receivables on that list that I gave you. There's only four delinquencies for about $90,000. Okay, but delinquencies is different than an interest default position, I believe. Maybe I'm wrong. If, if, if uh, in other words, uh, delinquency is the final step, but isn't there a step in between that indicates that when they, uh, uh, a loan, uh, you, can, you can then qualify a loan as uh, uh, you will not be getting any interest. You haven't put it in the default category yet, but you put it in the second step of the process Default. Is that correct? We we go from delinquent to default collection. That's how we operate. Delinquent default collection. Um, okay, and you're saying in collection right now, Walter, there's only what eighty-nine thousand dollars? You said for delinquent. Uh, in delinquent, they're delinquent. I'm making the payments. Right, and there's only eighty-nine thousand in that. Roughly. So I, I, okay, uh, that Marvel report that I'm, I'm confused, I'll have to reread that um, because uh, they indicated they, they uh, those numbers, I just would paraphrase, I was just sending those along from that report that I sent out to the board members. So it wasn't me making up anything, it was their actual verbiage from their audit report. Um, okay, what, now you guys meet Lake George, Lake Champlain, twice a year, correct? Yes. The board? Okay. And how many board members do you have? 30. Roughly 30. 30? Okay. And it's, and correct me if I'm wrong, Walter, but it's it's three basic board members from each county, five counties, that would be 15, plus the treasurer from each county, if, am I correct on that, Walter? That would be, that would be four, four uh, people, three board, county board members, plus a treasurer, that's four times five is 20. So 20 out of 30 would be of the five counties that oversee your agent, your, your uh, board. Is that, is that correct? Yes. Okay. All right. So how are the other 10 shows? Uh, there, uh, there's, there's three ex-official members from each county. The county board chairman appoints the other three. Okay. okay. Yeah. So there's three, you yeah, know, thank you. There's three board members from each county. And then it was my understanding that the treasurer from each county is also on board. Am I correct on that, ma'am? So that's four. So that's four people from each county. That's four times five is twenty. So twenty of the third board me of members of the total board is from the five counties. That makes sense. That's good. I was just curious how the other ten board members were chosen. That's all. The county board chairman appoints them. So the, the chairman of the board is one. The highway superintendent is two. Treasurer is three. Oh, okay. Well, and then three appointed. Three appointed. Members. So, okay. So this is new information for me. Thank you. So the chairman of each board is automatically on this board. Yes. yes. So Ryan Conover is automatically on this board. Okay. And then who else, ma'am? The treasurer. Treasurer, yeah. right? I knew that one. County highway superintendent. And the county highway superintendent. Okay. Okay. So now we've got three plus the three board members that are that the chairman selects. So that's six. Six times five is thirty. So that's all thirty. So the 30 board members are six from each county, chairman, treasurer, county DBW, plus the three board members that the chairman selects, assigns himself obviously, and that's six times five is 30. So that's your 30 board members, okay. All right, and you guys meet twice a year, all right. Um, is that normal, Walter, or sometimes you meet less or more, or is that, you know, 
Two is the minimum. Two, two is the minimum? Okay. All right. So you meet twice a year. Uh, and how are you in getting quorums? Is, there, is that no problem or is that a pro challenge? You get quorums at the meetings. You get quorums at the meetings? So there's no challenge in getting quorums or anything? Okay. Um, okay, uh, this is the f first information I've seen. I appreciate you supplying it. Um, I haven't had a chance to even look at it. It seems fairly simplistic. Um, uh, maybe we can also discuss which loans are not performing, and maybe we can look, you know, um, see what the status is on this. I know the LDC on a monthly basis and the EDC gives us an update on loans that are, are having challenges. Uh, and so forth. So maybe uh, that could be part of our, our account comes in on a quarterly basis and does quarterly financial updates. Right. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, all right. That's good for right now. Thank you. Okay, Ms. Bramer. I I'd just like to echo that about finding out which ones are in uh, default, or I don't want to say default. What's what's the other word you use? Delinquent. Delinquent. Yes. Because I've noticed on this list some of these businesses are out of business at this point. So just be curious to know if they got paid off when they were. They're still paying. It's a number right there. They are paying. Totally out of business. And they're still paying. They're still paying. Which is amazing. It, just the nature of the financing we provide, uh, we take some pretty high risk loans. Mm -hmm. uh, we've had what we thought initially were really good loans that were performed at the reverse as, as well. So it's kind of like the nature of uh, tried to keep our, you know, our delinquencies below, or, uh, below four percent, and right now it's below four percent. I think we've only written off roughly four hundred thousand dollars since 1987, which isn't considered the type of loans we look at. So, President Lyon. That, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Walter, can you give us a perspective on what a regional planning board is? We were created through general municipal law back in 1967. There are state. Uh, initially, we were set up to assist communities with local women's programs. In fact, the UPA was put in place. Uh, a lot of that work had been completed, and we branched down into smaller areas of economic development. Water quality, we kind of, we kind of went where the the need the need was. Now we're primarily just into economic development, water quality, host agency for the area. And what are some of the the agencies that you work with in in Warren County? Towns, LPCs, Jim Boots, Virginia, Sort of Water Conservation Districts, Water Quality Coordination Committees, Highway, Highway People. We've had a strong presence in the county here for a long time. Thank you. Any members of the committee wish to ask any more questions? Michael. Mr. Chairman, thank you. And I, I apologize, I was gone for a few weeks, so I'm, if this has been brought up, please don't hesitate to uh, interrupt me. But I just looked at a, a budget analysis report, um, and it mentions uh, the planning board and uh, the fact that we have a, a relationship where we um, support you with our payroll system and we pay benefits and the like, and it seems like it always pops up that um, the planning board, your planning board is always late and we're always looking to find out when we're going to get our money. And I'm curious how that arrangement started and whether or not you feel that there's any risk that the employees that are covered are considered Warren County employees. Mm -hmm. And also, um, if there's a way that we could find a way to say maybe pay a quarter ahead in advance or something like that, it's not a lot of money, but it would just take something off our list in terms of what we're reading every month. Um, there is an agreement from 1978 which states that the employees of the Regional Planning Board are 
um, deemed to be employees of Warren County um, for the purposes of determining and paying the employer's and employee's contribution for Social Security, retirement, Medicaid, or medical insurance, workers' compensation insurance, and unemployment insurance. So that's an agreement um, from 1978, which is based off of a resolution from 1977. Okay, so they are employees? So is there a budget line that says this is what it costs us every year to, to pay this? That I don't know. We'd have to ask the treasurer. I, I received a report from the treasurer, uh, and they're talking about what it costs the county to act as our payroll administrator. Well, we're more than a payroll administrator. We're an employer, right? So because of that, there's some other things, right? Um, is that retirement benefits also, Mary? Correct. Okay. So I, I guess I look at this and I, I think maybe we're, we're paying a significantly more share than what it appears we are. But there was an agreement prior, so I guess we'll just uh, I'll have to think about this for a few minutes. Any further questions on the part of the committee for uh, for Walter? Uh, Doug, you had your hand up first. So. Well, no, um, I, I was just hoping that uh, we have the time allotted for privilege of the floor. Uh, we, yes, I'm just Thank trying you. to get through the committee members. Oh, yeah, so. Thank you. Uh, go, ahead. go ahead, Mr. Light. Okay. Um, Walter, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah. The, how do other regional planning boards throughout the state, how are their employees handled? Do you know on that? Is this a unique situation that Warren County has, or is, would it be a typical? It's a typical, from what I understand. It's yeah. usually a three to five county operation. One of the counties has to assume responsibilities for you know, doing the payrolls and all that and for them. Okay. Great. Thank, Thank you. you. Great. Any other supervisors that are not on the committee that wish to make any comments, questions? Uh, no. I'm seeing any, mem any member of the public that would like uh, Mr. Whitehead. So, uh, <coughs> first of all, I'm not a CPA, but this is the language that's in that uh, Marvin audit report, and it might mean different things to people that aren't CPAs. But it says loans receivable which are considered collectible and are still accruing finance charges totaled one million eight hundred some odd thousand as of December thirty first, twenty sixteen. Amounts not accruing interest because management has determined that collection of interest is doubtful toted totaled one million sixty two thousand and thirty dollars as of December thirty first, twenty sixteen. So I think that's what Mr. Uh, Beatty uh, was referring to. Um, but what I'd like to uh, uh, address or uh, make a few comments on is I did foil some information from you uh, about a month ago, and I did receive it, and thank you. Um, among the things I asked for were the minutes for the 2015, 2016, and 2017 meetings, which you supplied. You've also sent them to the, the board, I see. I also asked for the resolutions. I got about half of them and a list of loans that were made in 2015, 2016, and 2017, which is a little different than the uh, list we got here because those aren't necessarily made in 2015, 16, 17, but are outstanding. Um, uh, if you look at the minutes, um, which I did, uh, it indicated in 2015 that you made eight loans that year. In 2016, it didn't indicate how many you made, and in 2017, it indicated you made 11 loans for a total of 19, yet on the list I got from you, which in, should have included three years, there were less than that number that were decided over two years. So um, um, that got me to, to looking at uh, you know what else might be outstanding out there. And I did run into one on the, um, what I noticed is that on, if you go to the clerk's website, uh, Ms. Bogle's website, um, there are mortgages set up for many of these loans um, between, you know, the regional planning board and the, uh, who's the mortgagee, and then the mortgager. And my question is why you would not have mentioned a mortgage that was filed um, in October of 2017 between um, Matt Sokol and four immediate family members um, and the regional Lake Champlain Lake George Regional Planning Board 
for a total of fifty thousand dollars. There was a loan given to uh, uh, Lucinda and Donald Sokol and Matthew D and Timmy J and Michael B. No, no it was not given to. It was given to Lucinda and Donald Sokol. I mean, fifty thousand dollars. That's on the website. And the uh, Alvin Loan Fund Committee being a permanent uh, committee of the Regional Planning Board has a disclosure statement that it has and that disclosure statement was filed. Well, I, I more question the disclosure statement that was made by the person that's been pushing for the $7,000 payment to you to be made over the last several months, and that is Mr. Sokol. Uh, Mr. Sokol, would you like to respond? Yeah, thank you. Uh, the deal that's going to price is my parents. He's the president, she's the vice president, my dad is the owner of So I go then and go to the committee on the loan that they were looking for. I think it would have been appropriate, perhaps, to let the people here know that you had a direct financial interest in a loan coming. I don't have a direct financial interest. According to this, you know, your name is right on it. I mean, I can make a copy of this, but there are there are Donald J, Lucina T, Matthew D, Michael B, Timothy Timmy J, um, individuals having an address on or in care of 38 Helen Drive. Uh, herefore referred to as the mortgager and Lake Champlain Lake George Regional Planning Board having its principal office in Lake George uh, herein referred to as the mortgagee so I mean this is just this is an official document I you know I I got this because I didn't see anything about DLS or anything else on the list of loans that I got the other day when I asked for this well that's why I'm right on here that's a very the other two are my brothers yeah I know. There's no. There's a legal document. Like I said, that's what we know. The uh, DLS loan is listed right on the sheet. I see that, yeah. but not on the sheet that you gave me when I asked for them. I don't believe. Uh, Ms. Bramer. Thank you. I, I don't want to delve into that one too much, but it's possible that the loan was given to DLS and then mortgage, they secured the loan with a mortgage that's owned in jointly by all of those people. So Matt and his siblings may have not have received any of the money, but they put up property to as collateral. I don't know. Right. But again, I don't. I haven't seen Mr. Sokol's disclosure uh, loan, uh, disclosure uh, that you, know, you each have to do. But it's not mine. <laughs> this says it's yours. Well, that's wrong. You take it up with the lawyers, Mr. Borges and Mr. Del Signor, who seem to have an involvement in all of this. Okay, that would be, I think we've uh, exhausted that one. Exhausted that one. Why don't we let that one kind of rock and roll? And uh, do we have uh, Walter? Do you have any further thing to say, uh, no. ma'am? No, ma'am. Okay, well, Walter, uh, thank you very much for your participation. I, uh, I. Uh, Maybe next time around it'll be a little gentler, okay? So yes, uh, I, I appreciate again. I appreciate your uh, your attendance, and uh, uh, I, I think uh, I, at least I would like to personally know more about your organization, and I, I I'm sure you do some some very f fine things for the communities you represent. So thank you for uh, attending. Yep. Uh, any uh, anything else, guys? Uh, I think. Uh, Motion to adjourn. Thank you for that suggestion. I've kind of lost that in, in my thought process. So, you know, Ms. Bramer is always uh, always quick. Uh, first and a second, Ms. Bramer, seconded by uh, Supervisor Stroud. Thank you very much. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye.